all right so the day has finally arrived so uh, now I have the uh, 7.2 gigahertz 980x on the bench again this time on the EVGA x58 classified free so yes I will be trying with the classified free so this is the moment of truth can I reach full pot with all three memory channels uh, plugged on the motherboard so uh, we need that to be to have any chance against the uh, the high cookie in SuperPi 1M, 32M and PyFast. So uh, we will see what happens. The board is insulated with Vaseline uh, uh, closed cell foam insulation and just uh, Scott paper towels. I'm using Inferno backplate as well on uh, secondary power supply and uh, yeah it should be good to go. Two way pin input. The uh, VRM heating does actually get quite hot so even if when the CPU is just running at stock, if there's no airflow, it does get quite warm. I mean, uh, quite fast. If you run some uh, stress and so on, so you really have to have some strong airflow towards the uh, VRM heating area. And also it's wise to have some at the uh, uh, hyper memories themselves. They do get quite hot if there's no uh, airflow. Sadly, there's some issues, so I cannot run uh, IDE from the uh, SATA free ports, but doesn't matter for this because we are not using a Bloomfield CPU that requires the highest possible base clock. I changed the X cool jumper to enable position, so that should help under LN2. There's one other jumper hidden underneath, it's called uh, J, uh, JIOH. So apparently, it, it, should, it should just help with base clock overclocking, so I will not use that for now because I'm running off town so yeah we will just get started my own own made Windows XP I have two Windows XP's and uh, so let's let's see what happens so uh, without further ado let's get started a moment of truth let's see if Shamino has any uh, magic on the motherboard to push the uh, 980X to its absolute limit. Minus 42. So, uh, just using my uh, water profile, so uh, I will just use 209. 209 uh, base clock and uh, like maybe like 31 on the multiplier for starters. CPU feature we want to uh, disable hyperthreading to uh, because we are just going for 32 m now. Let's put 5G on Uncore. Mem is uh, 686 because 686 has the best performance for some reason as we already know voltage I think I want like plus 350 VTT and we want relatively high vehicle like 1.8 and now because we know the PLL we want really high value like 2.3 QPI PLL maybe 2.3, 1.3 mm. mem mem 1.98 rest can be just like that so I will uh, get the temperatures right and I will see if we can get how we can get to the OS no luck so far so it's still uh, it um, Fails at minus 163. Cold boot bug is very close to that temperature as well, and I uh, it either hangs or I just get uh, some memory related blue screen. So driver IRQL blue screen, and it says some uh, system file has error. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is interesting. So with extreme cooling mode one hangs at minus 150, mode two. It's uh, mode two is uh, 
one uh, 63 and mode 3 around the same so I need to see what's up. All right an important update so uh, I was constantly pushing the uh, different settings I tried all the minor settings and there was just nothing I could do to get the uh, CPU colder but when I removed the uh, last memory stick it didn't change at all so I was still cold packing at minus 163 roughly and uh, I noticed when I, uh, I I started to double check things that something is not right because I have tested the uh, board two times. Um, I mean on two different boards. I mean the CPU I have tested. I have tested. I have tested the CPU on two different boards. I du I started double checking the uh, voltages from the uh, uh, measure points, and I noticed that the CPU PLL is reading something completely odd. Even when I set it to uh, some value I want in the bars, it's totally different from. Uh, it's really totally different what it should be. So when I see most clear and I uh, start the rig, it will read 1.37 PLL, and stock value, real stock value is 1.8. And when I set it to like whatever value I want, it will just lock at 1.63. So that's real reason why I would not hit max temp if the CPU PLL is not working. So uh, I was I decided to stop immediately because if the uh, PLL VRM is defective, it could damage the CPU. So now I will uh, just double check this quickly on the uh, E760, just a water, and see uh, what the PLL is reading at auto. If it's reading 1.8 when I just do CMOS clear, that's the explanation, and I will just use that board. If it's doing the same, there's something completely odd about these boards. So uh, we'll see that soon. And now I'm running the E760 again, so uh, so far it measures correct, so let's see what happens. Same settings, disable all useless things and so on. So all the changes. That can be enabled. So it's for about three. I'll just disable these. Useless things. Five two one core, six two core, all it says, two thousand mems and so on. So I will just initial post at one thirty. So yeah. And I, now I'm actually at full pot with, with all three memory channels now running power chips. But it's not, it's really, it's not like, uh, it's very on the edge. So it's not, uh, it's not really stable, but somewhat stable. It has some weird crashes all over the place, like now 34. All right, so now I've seen it all pretty much. So uh, when I mentioned the weird PLL values measured from the uh, uh, multimeter measure points at the top part of the motherboard, it was actually because of the uh, extreme cooling mode inside the BIOS and uh, due to the uh, X-Cool jumper over here. So if you enable the X-Cool jumper over here, it will pretty much lock the uh, extreme cooling mode free in the BIOS. So if you enable the jumper, the whole uh, option inside the BIOS will disappear. And uh, the way that the way that the extreme uh, cooling mode works is that it will just force different CPU PLL values. The uh, the value thing will just lie to you in the BIOS, so it will just measure some uh, uh, like common value in the voltage section in the bars but it's actually not true 
So the uh, last mode, so the mode 3 will just load very low value from the startup like 1.37. So uh, if you have a CPU that likes really, really high uh, PLL voltage, just don't use the extreme uh, cooling modes at all. Just leave them all disabled. And uh, now, since I tested both E770 and E760, they are pretty much the same. And uh, I was able, I was actually able to get to uh, full pot, but very, very barely, even with all three memory channels running. But it's pretty much useless. The uh, IMC is just so unstable all the time. So even if I got there and tried to run, let's say, PyFast at 6.8, it would uh, crash immediately and give some weird blue screen like OOOA with some uh, system file error. So that is an uh, IMC related, related thing. And uh, also the X58 classified is behind in the CPU speed compared to X58A OC from Gigabyte and uh, Rampage 3 Black Edition from Asus. I was able to run uh, PyFast at 6.85 on the Rampage 3 Black Edition when temperature was just something like minus 160 something because the cold bug would hit by uh, minus 165. So uh, the, uh, I'm not really, uh, I'm not that happy about the X58 classified sadly. On water, it's definitely good and it can match the other board options from other vendors, but on LN2, it's definitely behind. When I just run with single stick of memory, so either a power chip or hyper, and when I try to run uh, W prime, it would fail W prime 32 immediately at 6.6 .6 gigahertz when V core was set at 1.95. And uh, on X58 AOC, I was able to run uh, even 6.65 1024M with only 1.9 volts. 1.9 is the max value you can set in the BIOS. So uh, the uh, CPU overclocking is behind the X58 AOC and Rampage 3, so it's very, very sad. And on memory, it's not that much better either. But at least now I've seen it all. So uh, the last thing I could still try with this particular chip is to is that I would I could uh, I could uh, mod the uh, PLL of all this rail on the Rampage 3 Black Edition and give it a one more try. As uh, on Rampage 3 uh, series ports, the PLL voltage is very is very very limited. So you can so you can only uh, set it to like 2.1 and uh, this particular chip over here needs uh, 2.3 to 2.4 plus to run full pot. I even ran up to 2.5 now on this board when I was testing but uh, really it's it was just so annoying. I It was giving so weird blue screens and hangs. This board I mean at around minus, minus 160 to minus 175 range. I even tried all the different uh, like uh, sub settings in the BIOS, I tried uh, disabling the memory interleaving from stock six way and four way down to like two way and one way. It helped a bit, but it ruins the performance completely, so it's really, really useless. And, uh, and uh, one thing I really hate about the X58 classified is that it doesn't have proper reset. So when you hit the reset button over here, it will do like uh, it will do a hard reset. So when you press the reset buttons, nothing happens. You wait a few seconds, it will shut down, and then it will uh, then it will just try to uh, power on from scratch completely. And uh, that means the CPU will hit cold boot bug. And uh, it varies a little bit on X58 AOC. I could get rid of the cold boot bug completely, but. Uh, <laughs> On this board, it would have it. It always had cold boot bug at minus 145, and also, if the uh, V core and uh, if V core and CPU PLL were too high for power on, the whole uh, system would refuse to turn on. So it would just go F3 shut down, F3 shut down. So that mean so that meant I had to. Uh, turn off the power supply switch, clear CMOS and everything. And when I clear CMOS, I have cold boot back at minus 125. So it's really, really annoying. So you waste 
you end up wasting so much LN2 and pretty much achieve nothing. So in uh, overall, I'm not happy at all about the X58 classified, sadly. It's not as good as what we have nowadays on the market, like X299 Dark, Z390 Dark, SR3 Dark, and so on. But at least it's now tested, so I can confirm the whole X58 flagship lineup from my own experience. So uh, for the easiest possible Golf Town overclocking, the Gigabyte X58 AOC is the best. Definitely, you have the buttons. It's the easiest way you can. No other board can validate max frequencies as easily as the X58 AOC. And uh, I think efficiency-wise, the Rampage Free Black Edition is the best overall. For Bloomfield, it's the best by far, and so on. But it doesn't have multiplier control, and it has too limited CPU PLL range out of the box. But yeah, so that's the overall experience. If you have any questions or comments about any of the X58 ports I've tested and my uh, uh, 980X overclocking tests now, then please drop them down below. It's, uh, I don't really, it's, oh well, you can't always win, but I was really hoping for a lot better. So, uh, it's it, it seems so that this CPU just will not challenge high cooking those single core stuff. I am quite close on Rampage 3 Black Edition when I was running 6.85 Pi fast at like minus 160. So there's like 30 degrees range, but... The scaling and the overall like stability is so bad on the classified, so uh, I don't know, but yeah, no can do. I'm pretty sure the CPU is not degraded, I can confirm this though later with either of the boards and see if it still does the same frequencies. 7.2 was impossible to validate on this board, so yeah, it's definitely behind the other flagship boards, but yeah. So. Uh, the newer batch 980X CPUs like this one here, they are just good multi-threaded monsters. They can run multi-threaded tests almost at the same frequency as they can do single core stuff. And the uh, early AO stepping engineering samples and the very early retails, they are better in single core stuff compared to multi-threaded tests and they have better IMC in general. The newer batch golf towns have these stupid issues with the IMC when you want to run all three memory channels at full pot. So just saying. So if I don't figure out anything on uh, the Rampage 3 Black Edition, I just have to, I would have to try binning those early batch 980X CPUs and see if I could get lucky and found, and if I could find some uh, similar CPU like what Andre Yang had back in 2010, which did like 6.9. 32M and so on with the ease but yeah so that's the uh, end and overall conclusion to my x58 testing when it comes to golf town so uh, like this video if you liked it and maybe leave a comment down below subscribe to my channel and uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you next time